Hello, everybody, and welcome to our second class on Bash. We're going to learn some more advanced functions and start playing with some of the data um, we're going to be looking at um, in the rest of the course. And so the first thing we're going to do here is to orient you. I am on the class 2023 from our GitHub here. We go into classes. There's 01 Bash. And today we're doing 02 more advanced functions. So this same code is what I'm going to be reading here. Um, but you can follow along on, on the GitHub as well. Um, and if you still need help uh, setting up a terminal, you can go to the class wiki. And in the class syllabus, there is let's get our gear set up. And it has instructions for where to download file transfer programs, terminals, um, other things you'll need um, during the class. Okay, so let's get started. Um, first thing we do is we're going to go grab a file from the internet. Um, this is going to use the wget command here. And I have a encode data file of chip data. Um, there'll be a class on what chip is. Essentially, you're trying to find out where a protein binds to DNA across the entire human genome. And ENCODE has this wonderful portal. We'll have a whole class on that, but you can go to it and get a bunch of free data um, that we're going to use for this class. And this is just a pre-cooked version of what it would look like to download a ton of data from ENCODE and, and actually just how easy it is. Okay, so let's use this wget here. And um, just to orient, I am here in classes in um, going to move into 01 bash. And we are on O2 um, advanced functions. But I'm going to work from here um, and download the file here. So if we just do uh, wget and copy this, um, wget goes to the internet, goes to that URL and says what's there, and then downloads it to your computer. So just like that, we now have a new file here called encode awk lessons. And that has all the information from encode on the different data sets. And so let's take a look at it um, real quick with the uh, cat function we learned before. Um, so we'll just take a quick peek. Oh, what a mess. OK, so that's kind of hard to read. You can actually also just type that URL into your uh, favorite web browser and download it. And I have it preloaded here in Excel, which looks a little more sort of reasonable where we can see the column name. This is the URL of where the data uh, was organized. And so you have that for reproducibility. Some experiment exceptions. We're gonna go through all this later. Right now, we're just gonna use this file as uh, an example of how we will use Bash to investigate some of our genomic data. Okay, so here's what we're really gonna be looking at is column six, one, two, three, four, five, six, the target chain here. These are all gene names um, for different proteins that have uh, been undergone for this chip experiment. And let's say, uh, so when we look here in CAT, it's it's pretty messy, um, but there's where we can use um, uh, grep here is a very powerful function. Uh, there's some more background on here for general regularized expression print. Um, the story behind developing this was, is actually quite interesting. Um, I have the resources there for you. And so grep is just a command here. And I means we don't really care what the case is. And if we wanted to see um, what that those flags that are available, we can use the manual function, which I highly recommend. And we can look in here and see where I is here, ignore case. Um, so there's a lot of different parameters you can add here in grep so that you can kind of like it's kind of like find and uh, find in a browser or something. Um, okay, so let's take and see. Let's look, let's look at one protein. Let's say we're interested in polymerase two, which is the protein that makes all the RNA in the cell, or most of the RNA, for simplicity. Um, and so it's this really cool gene. It binds to other genes and it turns them on to turn into genes. So let's start with that one for interest sake, and it will actually be the first chip seek uh, we run once we get into the next flow classes. Okay, so if we wanted to see how many entries there are, um, we can do grep with ignore case, and then the characters we're looking for here is poll for poll two is how it's usually referred to. And it's actually um, 
downloaded now in my direct folder. I don't have to do that data connection there. Um, and then we pipe it to word count and what lines. So let's just see how many lines there are um, in this file. Again, to get out of the manual, I just type quit or with Q. And we're going to run this now on the file we've just downloaded. And OK, we see that there are 11 entries for poll. OK, so maybe there's 11 data sets. However, you want to be really careful with grep because it's going to look for anything with those letters and it doesn't care about the case. So what if the file name accidentally had those letters in it? So if we take a look here um, in Excel, the way it's a perfectly fine way to do it. If we search for poll um, here in our find box, we we'll, uh, poll. Um, so we see, oh no, one of the files has it in it. So that's not what we're looking for. This is a uh, gene called HDAC2. It's actually one I'm going to pick for my selection later. Um, but that's not polymerase 2. So that's a bad search term. And we can see other files have it in it too. Um, and that's not good. OK, now here we finally see it um, in uh, the actual gene name. So it looks like it's what we're looking for is actually poll R2A. And so these are the first example of how mistakes can happen. If you just search for a term, you'd probably figure it out pretty quick um, down the road. OK, so um, uh, this, this command here is the same thing with an output to grep out. Um, I can run that real quick. But uh, actually, I'm, I'm going to skip it because basically that's just what we did in Excel is look for all the entries that have poll. And we now know there's some entries we don't want because the gene name we want to be in poll. So there's a file in there, which we just saw, this one that has poll in the actual name of the file, but has nothing to do with the gene we're interested in. So if we use W, the command, again, you can take a look at that in the manual, that means match exact cases. And so that will give us our poll R2A. And then we're going to output that into a text file with the forward arrow here. So we're going to say grep match the exact cases of this character string pull R2A in this file and output those results into a text file. Otherwise, we'll just print them to the screen, which is probably just as fine. So I've just pasted that in. And now we can concatenate um, grep out text file. And actually, let's do a word count dash L grep out. Um, so we can see there's four lines in there, and that's good. Um, and they're probably going to have it's a little hard um, to see here, but we can see the gene name. There's two gene names with poll R2 in there, poll R2A and poll R2A phosphoserine 2, um, which is the actual entries we want. And there's two replicates of each of them. That's why there's four lines in that grep output. OK, so that's pretty handy. So now you would have a file of your favorite protein that you've subsected from this much larger one. Again, you could do this in Excel, um, but I think bash is something you'll be on the terminal and want to use these kind of commands frequently. Which brings us to another one commonly used as awk. Again, a little background on awk and how it was made. Um, you can check out the manual. This is another one of these um, ones like grep where there's a lot of different parameters, and a lot of different ways to do the same thing. Um, you could also imagine uh, we'll do a for loop at the end of this class, but running grep and awk in a for loop so that they go into a given file, grab the data, go into another file, grab the data, et cetera. So awk is similar to grep, uh, has a little more control so you can say which column you want to search in, for example. And what we're looking at here is calling the awk command awk. And the dash f is for field separator. Again, we can see that if we just go to the manual, um, this is a pretty deep manual. Um, so here, dash f is for field separator. Um, and we're, we're basically telling awk what type of file it is. And we're saying the field separator is going to be a variable in bash. The cache sign is meaning this is a, a variable like x in a function. And the variable is a tab separator. That is the common usage of tab separation. And so it's saying, OK, the field separator is a tab. 
And then inside these uh, little brackets is the actual um, part of the function of awk. And so there's a little, there's a lot more detail down here. I'm just going to go over the concepts and then you can read in more on, on what exactly is being done. But it's, it's just basically a more succinct version of what I'm saying. Um, okay, so if the column six, so this means the variable six is equal to pull R2A, then print um, that line or the output. Um, and then there's this semicolon here. So it takes a while to get used to awk um, nomenclature. Often you can just Google what you're looking for um, or look in the manual for um, different things. And, and I'm going to show you another example down here where you can do the same thing using a very different form of awk. Um, so in this case, we're just setting the field separator. And if column six is equal to this character string, print that object and look in this data file. And then we're going to pipe that to word count dash L. We're just going to assume it's going to look similar to grep. Um, I can assure you it will. Um, so let's do that here, quit out of there. And what we can see is four lines. So really, the grep command in this case was much easier. But if you um, knew which column your gene name is, you would have been able to just grep for pull two in column six, and you would have gotten those same genes with less, with more flexibility in what you were searching for. Um, okay, so we just did the same thing we could have done in grep with awk. This is often the case. There, things are inexchangeable, and it's just the way you want to think about how you have to do your given task. So let's look at all the proteins in column six. This is another probably better use of awk. Um, here we did, before we did dash F with field separators T, this is just a different way of saying it. So now we're right away inside the code um, ticks for awk and begin is part of the um, language for awk or parameters. And then FS here is the field separator is equal to tabs. We're putting it into the code now. And then instead of a flag, and we're saying the next operation is always separated by a semicolon, print column six, and do that in this file, and then output it to db, dbp.txt. So let's run that. And so this is going to give us all the things in column six, which is our target ID um, or our protein name here. So we'll get to see how many proteins we're going to look at in class. Um, by just this one line of code here, and we'll have a file associated with it. So here I did it. Now let's see if we got it. Um, there we can see dbp.txt. So let's uh, let's just see how long that is. There's no need to print it out. It'll just give us a long list of names. Um, 564. Okay, so one of our first thoughts might be, well, we have 564 proteins we're going to study. Um, and we're going to learn some more bash to see if that's actually true. Okay, so we just saw how long it is, but now let's sort it. Let's sort these proteins alphabetically. Um, feel free to cat and look at what the output is, but basically it's just going to be a long list of um, gene names. Okay, so we're going to use the pipe to our advantage. Again, you can use multiple pipes in a row. And we're going to run that same awk command of basically go into this file, print column six. But now we're going to sort it and count how many lines there are. OK, so let's do that. So it's probably going to sort by default alphabetically. Again, you can look in the manual. Um, it's probably going to go from A to Z um, or numbers first. But you can look in the manual and find out exactly how that's working. And we see there's 564 lines. That's great. OK, so our second piece of information here is now saying there's probably 564 proteins in this file. And technically, we wouldn't have had to even have looked at it yet. But there's a great flag in sort here, sort unique. So we're going to add another pipe here. Um, this file is no longer in that directory. Um, and so what we're going to do is that same awk print column six in this file, sort them, and then the dash u means unique. So if there's two names that are the same, it's going to only count at once, and then we'll get the word count here. 
So that's really handy because a lot of times you have redundant stuff and you just want to know the, the actual number of unique things. That's a very common task. So that is what this line will do for us. And so we previously had 564, but let's see how many unique ones we have. Ah, 480. Okay, so that means there are over 80 redundant, 84 redundant values in this file. So that's kind of good information and a good example of how you would use Bash um, to sort of look at data. Um, we quickly want to go over uh, for loops. I would say most of the for loops we're going to run will be in R. Python, every language is going to have a for loop. Um, and so it's good to kind of just go over the concept in Bash. Um, and we'll do that just very briefly. I have a, several examples for you here. Um, I'm probably just going to go over one of them. Okay, so for a for loop, you always have these parameters for x, and that can be whatever, um, in, and then a semicolon means the next step, do, and done. Those are all you need. For x in, do, and done. Okay, so for whatever, in file whatever, do this, and then be done, and you tell it when to exit. And so, for example, we can do one here. We have 4x in. Remember, this cache thing means save this as like a, a variable in your memory um, to bash. And um, this is where I show you a bunch of different examples of what the in really can be. And so seek, um, is a bash function that's going to give you the numbers between the two ends. So it's going to give us the numbers 1 through 42. Um, we could do 1 to 100. We could do 1 to 10, whatever the first number. We could do 10 to 100. Um, so whatever the first number is to the second number, it's going to make a sequence of numbers there. Um, and then the do is setting up the next function after, or what to do with that um, value in this sequence. So we'll have 42 iterations of this loop essentially echo just means print whatever so like i can do right here echo is a function see there's a manual for it if you want um uh and it'll just print whatever comes after it um seemingly very simple function so but the do echo will do is say um do do this function and then print it's going to print this bash is cool um, for the entry X that we're on. So we're in one of 42 or this current X, and then it's going to loop back and go through uh, 42 different times. Um, so if we do this, um, we're going to get the same echo output 42 times, but it's also going to print X here. So we made basically we said here's the variables to for loop over and print out the one you're on and so what we can see here is it started with one went through to 42 and we can change um, those numbers this is just setting in is setting how many times it's going to go over a given thing and to print it you can just do this cache x um so uh you can have different things like you could have four X in one, three, eleven, and fourteen. That's just really a for loop of four things. It's only gonna, it's gonna do a one, three, eleven, and fourteen is is single inputs. And so if you did this and printed out that X, you're gonna get four things, but with these numbers on the end um, because we decided to print out X. You don't have to do that. Um, so we would get that there. And it just tells you at what entry it went through. So it went through 1, 3, 11, and 14, and did the echo uh, command of printing this and x. We could see what that looks like without printing x um, here. And we'd see the same thing, but it just wouldn't tell us which variable. And that's where bash for loops would be really handy. Is let's say you wanted to count replicates, you could do an awk and then do a for loop of awk and have it print each time it did something. So you would, if you got pull two in four times, it would print one, two, three, four, and then it would go to the next one. So you'd have a numbered entry for them. There's other ways to do that, um, but it's a common use of a for loop in bash. You can also um, print, uh, print both like two variables. 
So you can have nested for loops. So the first for loop here is for X in sequence one through five, do, and now it's saying, instead of doing a function, do another for loop. So for Y in ABC, do echo and, and print X and Y together um, or merge them. That's what this cache X and cache Y is doing. X is indicated by one through five and Y is indicated by ABC. And now what you can see here, what I'm trying to point out a little bit is this first for loop has five entries, but there's only three in the second for loop. So what happens is a thing called recycling where it's gonna recycle A, B, and C. So after the third round of X, Y is gonna go and say, oh, the fourth one is A again, and then B. Um, so we can, uh, you can type each of these lines out if you want, and you have to close both for loops here. So we have two duns. Um, and this is just that uh, put out here where we separate each part of the for loop with a semicolon. So you'll see here, ABC is gonna be recycled in this for loop and we see 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 2B, 2C, 3A. Uh, I guess I, I made a mistake. So I guess this for loop just simply for each one, you're gonna get three letters, A, B, C. Uh, in the second one, A, B, C, third one, A, B, C. Um, so X is gonna go say I'm on one, and then it's gonna do the same thing for A, B, and C, and Y, and then um, print each of those out. What I did say is true, that if the for loop ran out of information to print, it's just gonna go back to another entry in here. Um, so sorry for that, but um, yeah, I think it's it's pretty handy. I've never really done a nested for loop in Bash, to be honest, more what we did the first time, where we sort of printed a number onto the side of something um, is probably a more common um, use. There's a bunch more in here uh, just to see um, here, like if you wanted to print out all the lines in that file we just downloaded, um, we could do that here uh, for, um, by just pasting this in. And essentially this is another way to use a for loop that's pretty common is you just wanna see a few lines. You could add an awk to this and uh, pipe an awk of grabbing pull two and just printing those lines. Um, but this just printed the whole document essentially, not um, what you would wanna do, probably you'd do this. Um, but to show that a, a, a for loop can take a line as, an, as a in piece of information in the length of this file, um, do echo and then print the line um, is what this cache line is doing. Echo is the print. This is the thing it's going to print is each line um, and then done to finish the for loop. So it can know the length of a file and go through it. And you could add an awk here would be another great thing to do is just go through and grab the ones that you're you're interested in. Okay, so uh, last thing I want to go over that's a common thing to use in Bash for genomic data is sed. It's kind of like find and replace. So sed i means in, it's in, in an existing file or in, in a place. Um, and so uh, your sub, your s forward slash, um, this is worth, this manual is definitely worth looking at. Um, and it gives you the kind of um, information it wants uh, to do things. And um, at the bottom of them, there's usually uh, really good examples of um, the actual uh, commands in use. Um, I don't know why my mouse isn't scrolling, but you can see this is a very advanced manual here. Um, uh, and they don't have actual um, examples of the usage, um, but that this is where also where Google comes in quite handy is you can just Google how to use said or whatever, and it will do, uh, show it to you um, there. Um, so here we're going to come back to this example where this is just said is substitute old world old word with the new word. Um, in star.text, 
Um, we can do this. We're going to do this in our encode awk lessons file that we just downloaded. And let's change poll R2A, anything that has poll R2A into, in it, into poll 2. And this will be said I, which means sort of ignore the case. Um, and uh, or it's in an existing file, sorry, um, here. This is all also marked down um, in the text as well. Um, so yes, we're just going to take said and change poll R2A, old word, to new word is poll 2. Um, and that is all you need. And now we will see that our um, uh, poll R2As are now going to be uh, poll 2s. And so what I suggest doing, um, I'll do one example of this, is go back and practice your awk um, there and now look for poll 2 in column 6 and see what you find and see if you get the same answer. And that's one way to check um, if your command worked is go back and now awk this, and you should still receive four entries. But what you've just done is remove the poll R2A um, and put poll two there. So the um, phosphorus will, will also be there, but that's something to explore, see what happened um, and check it out as a way to start to learn this a little better. Um, so we can use that same uh, function. I'll do the awk with you here. So, um, we're running that same awk of if in column six, print the line, and we've now changed that file, um, and we can see there's zero because we changed poll R2A to poll two, and we can see from this same idea, just changing the character search in column six to poll two. Oh, no. Ah, that's why <laughs> um, this was in a different folder before. We're just doing it right from this directory. Let's run that, and we're back to four. Okay, great. So we changed the name. We need to sort of be careful about that, um, that uh, if you were to go run your previous code, now that you've changed the name, it's not going to work. And that could cause problems if it's in a longer uh, pipeline of code. But congratulations, we have a lot of bash skills now. And to put them to use, um, I would I uh, have a little exercise for you here to make what's called a shell script. Again, use Google. Um, just here to help point out what, how to Google. <laughs> it's a very useful thing and very common practice. Don't feel ashamed. And so uh, Google shell script, and you can use Nano as a hint um, from class one in Bash, and um, put a bunch of commands in order and then run that file, so save that file in nano, and then run that file from that directory. Um, and there's a couple other hints in here in the GitHub code. So uh, enjoy, uh, have fun with the exercise, and we'll see you in the next class. In the meantime, be well.